Hi, and welcome back. So when it comes to reducing visceral fat, this latest study shows that one class of food is far more beneficial than others. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study with regard to visceral fat reduction has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Arkady Mazin and covers a study that was published in Biomed Central, which looked into variants of the Mediterranean diet to see which one had the best outcome when it came to the reduction of visceral fat. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. This study pitched two variants of the Mediterranean diet against each other in a randomized controlled trial and more on exactly what a controlled trial is later. The researchers found that the one which contained more polyphenols was more effective for weight loss. Now, in my humble opinion, this gives the impression that there may only be a few variants of the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean Sea, from the Strait of Gibraltar to the shores of southwestern Turkey, is approximately 2,500 miles. That's about 4,000 kilometers. If superimposed on the USA, it would stretch from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles. And there's no way that all cuisines in this area could be represented in a two-diet study. That said, let's see what they actually found out. A healthy diet is one of the most powerful anti-aging interventions available to us today. But the question of which diet specifically is the healthiest is very much open to debate due to the sheer number of factors involved. The Mediterranean diet, rich in olive oil, vegetables, legumes, fish and nuts, and the author says is probably the most evidence-based of all, my point here is where does the evidence come from? Does it come from trusted sources? Numerous epidemiological studies and a handful of interventional studies have linked the Mediterranean diet to various positive health outcomes, including decreased overall mortality, along with a lower incidence of cardiovascular disease and indeed cancer. Epidemiological studies sound very impressive, but are they really reliable? Many people who want to make their point, normally around diet and lifestyle, will direct you towards study results. But what kind of studies are they and are they reliable? There are many issues with epidemiological studies, one of them being a very high dropout rate. Another is reporting bias or recall bias. This occurs when the study group and the control group systematically report differently, even though they're exposed to exactly the same stimuli. There can also be problems with the accuracy of diagnosis and or causes of death, etc. years after the fact. Also, not including all the confounding factors. These are things that can skew the results, such as age, exercise regime, smoking history, medications taken at the time of the study, etc. In this study, the researchers wanted to dig deeper and understand which of the many ingredients of the Mediterranean diet make it so healthy. In this new paper, the researchers used a new interesting study design to elucidate the role of polyphenols, a class of phytochemical known for its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Polyphenols are abundant in berries, nuts, vegetables, tea, coffee and in dietary supplements. This particular group of researchers has been studying polyphenols for years and its previous studies have all linked polyphenols to better cardiometabolic outcomes. For this new randomized control trial called Direct Plus, the 294 participants were divided into three separate groups. The control group ate according to healthy dietary guidelines. The first of the study groups was put on a generic Mediterranean diet called MED and the second on a more plant orientated Mediterranean diet called MED Green. All participants were put on an identical physical activity regime. The two study groups were isocaloric, meaning they had an identical number of calories, but the participants in the MED Green group also consumed three to four cups of green tea and one green shake with Wolfia globosa, a strain of duckweed also known as mankai a day. These alterations effectively doubled the amount of polyphenols from 440 milligrams a day for med to 800 milligrams a day for the med green group. 
Let's take a look at the cohort. The participants mean age was 51 and their mean BMI was 31. This classified them all as obese. 36% were pre-diabetic and another 11% were diabetic. The main end point of the trial was weight loss, but it was measured in a more sophisticated way than just popping them onto a weighing scale. MRI technology was used to quantify the amount of abdominal adipose tissue, also known as visceral fat. Unfortunately, the trial was slightly lopsided regarding sex as 88% of the participants were biological males. Let's take a look at the results. Following the 18 month trial period, mean weight loss in the control group was negligible. The two study groups, on the other hand, showed substantial weight loss. Although the drop was larger in the med green group, 3.9% versus 2.7% in the med group, this difference was not statistically significant. Results for waist circumference were also largely similar. The med green group proved to be more effective in reducing the amount of visceral fat, which is considered more harmful than other types of fat. Here, the difference between the two med diets was statistically significant. The mean visceral fat reduction was 14% in the med green group and 6% in the med group, a difference of 8%. The researchers went to great lengths to establish the effects of each dietary component. According to their calculations, higher consumption of green tea, walnuts and dietary fiber were all significantly associated with greater visceral fat loss when adjusted for age and sex. However, Further adjustments for weight loss and reduction in waist circumference complicated the picture, with only increased dietary fiber consumption remaining statistically significant. So either med diet was OK as long as it had a high fiber content. Within the med green group, higher consumption of mankai was significantly associated with greater visceral fat loss and improved cardiovascular outcomes. High plasma polyphenol levels were significantly associated with visceral fat loss in all models, showing a direct contribution from the polyphenols. Urolithin A is a compound produced by human endogenous bacteria from polyphenols. Direct urolithin A supplementation can overcome limitations of endogenous production, such as variability in the gut. In this study, urine urolithin A levels showed a robust association with visceral fat reduction and were themselves associated with increased consumption of walnuts and mankai. Now, the Mediterranean diet and polyphenols quite rightly receive a lot of praise, but real interventional studies are still very rare. The results of this randomized controlled trial confirm the importance of polyphenol consumption being more effective for weight loss, especially when it comes to the dreaded visceral fat. Since many aspects of aging are sex dependent, the disproportionate number of men in this study could have limited the cross-gender veracity of the results. That said, visceral fat is thought to be more harmful in men. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I've made a few points which I think are relevant to this particular study. I've written them down, so I'll read them so I don't miss any of them. Um, the thing to remember here is it's a controlled trial. But what you've got to remember about a controlled trial, it just means that there's a control group. It doesn't mean the participants of the trial were controlled in any way as they would be in a lab environment. So they're allowed to be as uncontrolled as their conscience will allow them. Um, and then you may say, ah, but it's a randomized test. All that means is they weren't allowed to choose which group they went in. They were randomly assigned to a particular group. And some may say, if you could choose the group you went in because you knew you could stick to that, or it's one that you thought you wanted to do, you may well want to stick to the protocol slightly more. Uh, over the 18 months, that this study took place, it would be impossible to monitor effectively what exercise everybody did and how exactly they stuck to that particular form of the Mediterranean diet. Now, am I saying the Mediterranean diet is not the best? Nope, we still don't know which diet is best for mankind. Um, and as I said, the Mediterranean is a massive place, so it would be difficult to say that there is one particular Mediterranean diet. I do agree that polyphenols should be in people's diets because the, the evidence of that is overwhelming. 
Uh, I get my polyphenols from the tea and coffee I drink and also the berry shakes that I take in the afternoon. You'd assume that it would be best to get these polyphenols from um, plant matter, from plant foods. But then how bioavailable is that? are those polyphenols? Would it not be better sometimes to take it from supplement form? The only way we would be able to know this, and it's not going to happen, is from a clinical trial.